Hey everybody, welcome to Geek Beat Live, and this is a super special edition that it we is. are doing uh, in conjunction with our friends over at Cedia. We're going to talk today about... Well, we, about how to treat the media. How to treat the media, how it's to treat people like that. us. <laughs> so we actually have a third host today. That, that we do. Yes, Jeremy Glowacki. Did I say that right? No. Is that Milwaukee Glowacki? Glowacki. Yes, that's exactly right. He said it was right. like Milwaukee. We're going to call him Jeremy G. <laughs> Jeremy that, G. That works too. Yeah. Just like John P. You, you get to P still P be Callie Lewis P because... P Zizides, Zizides? Yeah. Is that how you say your no. last name? P. Oh, okay. My last name is P. <laughs> well, we have a thing around na of names around here. That we do. So we're very excited. Uh, he is the editorial director at Residential Systems. Uh, Jeremy, what is Residential Systems? Kind of explain yourself. Well... Residential Systems is a, a trade publication for you know the custom installation channel. So we focus all of our editorial attention on the professionals in this you know installation integration market for the custom home, and uh, you know it's a it's a controlled circulation. So we don't have a consumer audience. Um, we speak directly to the to the professionals, and you know, obviously we have an online presence as well. And you know, Twitter following and all that fun stuff, but uh, but it's it's a little bit of a different perspective, I guess, than than what uh, you two guys you know kind of work on and <laughs> focus on. Which is why you're here to get both perspectives, which is right. going to be really yeah. great. So we're going to try and present everybody with a kind of well-rounded vision of what what occurs when the media comes to visit you, specifically at trade show related events. And we got people in the chat room here. I see Scam School Brian yes. is here. Hey Brian there, Brushwood. Tube Maker, Rusty G, Chris Philby, Mr. Jigs. We got a lot of people in the chat room. And if this is your first time joining us, especially if you're one of our friends from Cedia, then uh, just hop Welcome. in the chat room <laughs> and introduce yourself. Let us know who you are, yes. where you're from, and things like that. We will be watching the uh, chat room as we do this this show and we and want to encourage you to ask questions as we go so don't feel like you know this is a lecture and you have to wait until the end of it to ask questions or chime in with your thoughts we will be paying attention and bringing you guys into the conversation that is true and i, I realized we we didn't introduce ourselves actually oh yeah she's callie lewis <laughs> she's famous <laughs> she's hot she's smart this is john and P. i'm just john p Right, right, right. You're kind of smart. A little, not you know. really. Not really. We don't need to get into all that. Um, so we have a bunch of stuff to cover today. Uh, we we really want to get into um, the differences of you know how what we've experienced in the past, as well as you know suggestions for how to treat people like us, people like Jeremy. Uh, when they come to visit you. Yeah, so just to lay the foundation here a little bit, we know that when you are going to attend, uh, to exhibit, you know, attend, exhibit at a trade show, it is a significant investment yeah. from a marketing perspective, et cetera. There's capital outlay to, to build a booth and acquire equipment to go. You've got to have some um, operating expense for travel and people and of course you pay the venue to be there there's a lot of investment and we and know that the goal is to come right. back with as much ROI as you possibly can and it's not only capital investment it's also a lot of time I mean this takes True. companies a ton of time to plan to process and to put together that's true and so Jeremy I'm sure like us you've uh, been to events where you've visited a booth and thought Wow, I, I think just a few little tweaks here could have made a big difference. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's, uh, there's always that, uh, that experience where you, you kind of brush past somebody that uh, looks a little sad and forlorn, and you just there's no way that you're going to stop because it's, it's, it's almost too sad. 
But then there are other times when um, you know you've got a, a surprise where someone you know catches your your eye. Mm -hmm. But I would say that the majority of the time, what I'm doing at a trade show is seeing people I've already prearranged meetings with. Um, our time is so tight at these shows, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's impossible to to go out there with go without a plan. So well, I actually want to talk about that, and we'll get into it a little bit because you handle conferences and trade shows differently than we do, That's and true. we'll talk about that, those differences. And sure. yeah, some of it just comes down to the type of coverage the that coverage each of us want. do, and so that's why we're all here because we're going to do things slightly differently, and, yeah. and and you guys need to know how that works. So what I think we're going to do, uh, just for the sake of our conversation, we've got about an hour scheduled with everybody, although we can go a little longer if we want to. We're going to try and break this down. The three of us have conferred, and we have a few notes, but we can wildly vary from the notes based <laughs> on the kind of questions you guys want us to address. Uh, but I think the way we'll tackle it is first, let's kind of go in chronological order. order. Let's talk right. about things you might do before the big show. Right. And then we'll talk about things that um, make a difference at the show, in your booth, with your people, and things like that. And then we're going to talk about, okay, now that the show's over, how, how do we follow up and, and make the most of what, what occurred in that action-packed couple of days that occur? So... That sounds to you guys. All right, let's get to it. But, let's do it. But remember, chime in in the chat room. Just geekbeat.tv slash live. We'll get you there. Sign in. Do your thing. Go. Indeed. Oh, go. go. I'm on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I like to put them on the spot. <laughs> well, it's funny because now is now right at the beginning, we're going to start getting into differences between the way we all operate, I think. So, yeah. Um, I guess let me let me throw out the opening salvo and say that um, before the event, uh, the way that I usually operate is we we as media go and register with with the show and mm -hmm. and and by the way a lot of these things we're talking about they don't apply to just CDA it could be CES it could be South by Southwest it could be a variety of any, different any things. show this is kind of the way it works from our perspective we register as media. And the, the venue, the, the people doing the hosting of the show, they vet us. They see, are you really journalists? They, they, they will make us submit credentials and examples of work and things so that you kind of know that once somebody walks up with a media badge, they've there been a little they've bit been of vetted. vetted. Yeah. And, and different shows obviously have different credential requirements. And some are much harder right. to get in than others. Cedia is not one of those that just lets anybody in. Right. So, uh, when when people walk up and they've got a press badge, they're 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 real, they're legitimate. Okay, so when we do that, one of the things that we do is we turn over all this personal information to the venue, including among other things, phone numbers and email addresses. And uh, when when we do that, we're kind of also opting in to receive messaging communication right. from attendees. And Jeremy, I know you've got some thoughts about uh, how that might be employed. Well, yeah, you know, I, I want um, some reason to, to make an appointment. You know, it's, uh, it's not enough just to say, hey, can you stop by and see us or schedule a time? I'd like to, to really have a, a reason for being there because, like I said, my time is pretty tight. Um, I'm also juggling specifically with Cedia Expo. I'm, uh, I'm, in charge of the Cedia Daily, which is the the uh, on-site newspaper there, and uh, so so I'm ba managing a team of uh, professionals doing that, and I'm also trying to be, you know, uh, visible and uh, available on the show floor. So um, you know, I'm 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 definitely uh, more interested in setting up appointments and keeping my time focused on 15 minute minute intervals, but um, and I'm I'm. There's already a lot of folks I, I know in this particular market, so the shows um, scheduling with with individuals is a lot easier um, than a, than a show I'd go to for the first time and not know anyone. But uh, I, I'm looking for uh, you know a list of products that are being introduced, perhaps um, you know something that I don't already know to know, I don't already know about. Sometimes we have interviews beforehand and. I don't necessarily need to, to be there for very long. Maybe just see something in action that I've heard about over the phone. But, uh, but I think the key is more than just you know this assumption that I I'm going to be able to see everyone. So that that's my that's my uh, my two cents on that. <laughs> I guess. 
<laughs> so, so you actually so sometimes will do pre-interviews and then complete the interview at the booth itself, scheduled. Uh, we but is the primary mechanism by which people would reach out to you before the event generally an email? And do you know how, I mean, you're, you're also on the kind of the inside of right. the Cedia world. So uh, 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 how does... How does that work? I mean, if I'm an exhibitor, do do I just know that I have this access to this email list? Do I send it through someone and they send it, send the messaging out? Do you know anything about how that works? Well, as far as I'm as I understand it, uh, the Cedia PR and marketing team makes that list available to every registered uh, exhibitor at the show. Um, so that that's available there and. Um, you know, we, we start getting, for those companies that are aware of this, we start getting, um, you know, emails fairly early. And I think right now we've started actually getting some of those. Um, there are folks that we've already been in touch with throughout the year, you know, PR agencies that are in touch with us year round. But for those who maybe don't have that kind of a budget or that, that sort of a, um, you know, opportunity to have someone professionally keeping, keeping us alert on things year round, they they start their their process right around now, a couple months ahead of the show, and um, that that should be very easily available. It's just a matter of reaching out to CD. I think they try to make that available, and sometimes it just gets lost in the email uh, with all the exhibitor information that's going out. But uh, so, so even if you don't see it, you should look out for it, absolutely. or you should um, approach somebody who's organizing well, the show should you, to ask for should it. Should you? Here's a question, Jeremy. How many, I know that before all of these trade show events I go to, I get a slew of emails from all the exhibitors. How many of them do you read? Well, if, if they're personalized, I read them. I really do. <laughs> I mean, it, it's one of those things. This, this channel that we're in, I, I think juggling some of the events that you attend, it's, there's so many different angles that you could go, like things that aren't necessarily relevant to what you want to cover. For, for a, a very focused show like CDA Expo, um, this is my, my channel. This is what I focus on. So I don't want to miss anything. But if it's very generic, it's, it's more of a, a dealer or, you know, integrator focused email. It's very, you know, like marketing yeah. speaky and, um, you know, like a PDF or something that just doesn't draw my attention. I, it will get lost. But, but you someone, actually see them. You, you see just them coming through. You just don't really pay attention to yeah. it. Yeah. How about yeah, you, I, Callie? Well, you. yeah, I I actually look at everything, but here's the thing. I mean, personalization is a key is key to what you just said. Um, if if something is personalized, it doesn't. Is that that's not? Hi, Callie. I know that's a form letter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know there are you know tricks to making it sound personalized. Um, but if it is personalized in the sense that they know what I actually cover, I know, they know I'm into gadgets or this specific thing. They know you love robots. They know I love robots. Then that's going to attract my attention immediately. Um, even for the biggest of all shows, CES, I will look through everything. But I'm also glancing. And it's, it's not until I see something that actually piques my attention that will that I'll stop and actually read through it and potentially respond back. Okay, so for me, I actually read every single one of them, with one exception. If you send me an email and it is nothing but images or a PDF attached, oh, right. I delete it instantly and I do not even attempt to read it. And you know, there are some, there are some PR firms that will, um, it's like, they want to appeal to, or they want to be able to email everybody, so they do this very basic HTML format. It like looks horrible, like from 1980s. Yeah, either stick to text <laughs> or do a basic HTML format, but here's the deal. If you're gonna send those emails, make sure that um, you're not, you know, putting a 500K attachment in there unannounced right. and things like that. Just send a nice email and then all the other typical marketing kind of trickery uh, will will apply. But I think the key takeaway here is you got three different people who, who attend a lot of conferences, all of who say, 
yes, I look at every single right. email. At least I at least give it a glance. So, so to answer means, your question, yes, you definitely should send. You can't leave it up to chance that we'll actually stop by your booth. You need to reach out to us. You got to you got to use that list of registered media mm -hmm. right off the bat. Yeah. Okay. So and, and then the next step. Go ahead, Jeremy. I think the other thing is that um, you, you know, you need to start early too because our our schedules do get filled and it's it's difficult you know, a week before the show to respond to someone. Oh, it's too yeah. late then. Oh, yeah. Too Definitely. late. Yeah. Way too late. You should start yeah. when? About now, right? I mean, we're... Yeah, we're, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just beginning to think about scheduling right now. I'm, I'm, I just turned someone down for a scheduling uh, booth appointment today because I'm not quite ready yet, but it's soon. You know, I'd yeah. say within the next couple of weeks, I'll be ready to turn my attention to doing that. But yeah, I've had the, that every, every time I've gone to events like this the last week someone says you know can we do it and of course this show is right around the Labor Day holiday so you know you're trying to get in a little bit of time of vacation right at the end of the summer and you know you know that they're they're emailing you to see if you can go see them for some reason and it's you you, you would love to do it but your schedule's booked and it's just yeah. it's gonna split your time too much to be able to squeeze them in typically so Okay, so Chris Philby is asking a question in the chat room that brings us into a very good point. He asked, is it better to send snail mail, even in this tech world? For me, no. No, I don't want to see all this press stuff come in the mail. It's just going to overwhelm me. Email is definitely much better. But uh, I have a different perspective on that. You would prefer to see mail mail? No, I'm not saying prefer, but if you want to stand out, everyone is sending me email. Send me a, If you send me a snail mail or... I would say just a letter via snail mail. I mean, I'll open it and I'll look at it, but I don't know that it'll make a big impact. Uh, if you want to send us different. like actual product before the show, that would catch my attention. Yeah, or some kind of tchotchke. You know, ask your sales force uh, what kind of things they would do to grab someone's attention who they're having a hard time with as a prospect and kind of do the same thing for media. But how about phone calls? Do you... Right. Jeremy, do you want to get a phone call from someone prior to an event? Uh, I hate to say it, but Be no. honest. I, no. I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's a time drain for me, and I, I'm, I'm very responsive to email, but, but phone calls, they can, they can be avoided too easily. And, uh, you know, you, you just you look at your caller ID, and, you know, if, if it's not just an immediate deadline issue, you tend to let that go to voicemail, and, yeah. and it's... Let less, you know, I, I've got some friends out there who, uh, you know, I, I, I respect their, their aggressiveness. They'll call and email almost simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And I always respond to the email. I don't uh, typically call them back unless it's something, you know, putting out a fire for some reason or scheduling change as the last minute might, might happen, which is understandable. But uh, yeah, those things for phone calls is appropriate. Uh, for me personally, I don't like phone calls either. Uh, I'm not. I, when I'm at my computer at email, I can actually work with my schedule a lot better than I can than taking a phone call while I'm driving or something like that. So it's just a lot easier for me personally. But I do know journalists who prefer the phone, who prefer that kind of contact. So you have to get to know your journalists and, resp and keep a list of who likes what. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in just a bit. Uh, but I want to go back to one other okay. one other key point, Jeremy, that you were making earlier, which is uh, you really would like a reason to stop by the booth. And so uh, I'm curious, uh, what kind of reasons have, if if anything pops into mind, what kind of things uh, have really made you say, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to go by there? Well, you know, it's a lot of times it's a new category, and I think that that's a tough one to define prior to a show. A lot of times it's being at an event that you start to see what the categories are. Um, you know, these evolving areas of interest. Um, you know, a lot of, you know, in the past years, a lot of Apple related products, you know, the eye products have, have been become, you know, developing trends, you know, things that t tie into iPads. But I don't, um, I don't know what, for one example currently, but you know, if you start to see two or three new things that haven't been really their own category before, and if someone can kind of give you a hint about a burgeoning area that they're an existing company, but they're going into something new, mm -hmm. um, that's going to draw my attention because it's a trend that I can kind of 
pick up on and cover and look like I'm very insightful, you know, and I don't mind a little help. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, 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 it's also just knowing the companies the way I tend to have to know them. If they, if they can explain to me if there's something new that, that, you know, we can tell you this much about it right now, but until you come here to see it, you know, it's not really going to do it justice. Something that, that you know, that, that kind of approach works for me typically. So I don't Callie, want to be too cagey, though. You know, tell yeah. me the truth. Callie, do you remember anything that's made you want to specifically stop by a booth? Yeah, the, the one specific thing that I can think of that if I get an email or a call telling me that this is why you need to st stop by the booth is if there's going to be a demo of sorts that just can't explain the product through e like you can't explain the product through email or phone call and you just have to see it to believe it type of thing not infomercially but uh think think of that stick remember that iphone case that was made of that super hard oh, stuff yeah. that was like it was like gel until you punched it and it hardened immediately yeah, yeah. i don't remember i forget what that word's what called. that was iso something yeah. i don't know but yeah on but, impact, know, it stiffens up, and then as soon as the impact's gone, it's, yeah. Or we, the Magnapole. You know, I yeah. mean, if, if those types of demos that you have at your booth are going to cause me to be like, oh, my God, I and love by the that way, product. And not just like, oh, we're going to do this one time at this particular time no, on this particular day. No, that will not work for that me. Doesn't, we can't make our schedule around that. But if it's something you're going to have on an ongoing basis uh, that you can, they can demo, demo to you anytime you stop by, that helps, right? Yeah, Anything exactly. else? Not really. I'll tell you. I'll tell you two things that also come to mind in okay. addition to these. And and I don't care. We're talking about journalists in general. Journalists are humans, and so these two things matter. Number one, you tell us, "Hey, I've got something specifically for you." Ah, uh, yes. And if you can just stop by, just tell, just hunt me down when you're here because I've got a little something for you. It might be a new little product release that you want to give us in advance for a review or something you just announced at the show and you want to yeah. you, you want us to review it and you're going to give us one right there on the spot at the show. That makes a difference. And a second thing that makes a difference telling us you have some sort of a uh, a lounge area where uh, <laughs> where the media is invited to come and use your bandwidth. Yeah. For like, we're gonna have a Wi-Fi spot. Not everybody can do it, but just just a few just select media, yeah. media partners. If you stop by, if you need to do, you know, an email, if you need to, you know, post something, come on over. We got a private area. Hang out with us. You're welcome anytime. And those two things, I think, can also uh, yeah. make a bit of a difference. What I think guys... one of the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna add one one other thing is that because of our opportunity with the Cedia Daily, we're looking for events too. You know, I mean, I agree with you. It's tough to hit a specific time at a show and, you know, you, you might miss that. But if, if we know far enough in advance where we can schedule something, you know, there are obviously are going to be press conferences at, at shows. And that is something as a, as a media outlet that's, you know, an official show daily that, that, that has to be covered by us. And, um, you know, we're, we're not going to cherry pick which ones we go to. But, you know, if they're, they're doing a, a one, you know, scheduled demo at, at the booth, that, that's an event that we feel like we have to cover. So we will be there um, within reason, of course, you know. Sure. And, but, and, uh, yeah, have this, this is one of the other differences between certain types. There are certain types of journalists. For us, what we do when we go to an event is we look to gather a lot of short stories. I mean, if we come out of CDA, we'll literally come out of CDA with 40 different videos, maybe right. 50 videos, every one of them, you know, three to five minutes long, showcasing one thing. One different product. Okay, and then there are, and then, you know, but we're, we're a general news gathering type of mm -hmm. organization. And then if, if you have a trade specific one, let's say, then sure. you're, you're not looking for that. There, you're already kind of narrowing things down to certain range of products. And then if there's a scheduled um, event, th that is more important for you. So definitely don't, we're not saying don't do those, but yeah, this is one of those things that, that's a little bit different. Um, okay, so what about um, in terms of what you were talking about before, how much it costs to do these shows? Let's add some more cost in there. Mm. What are your thoughts, Jeremy, on hiring a PR firm for promotion for that show? I think it's critical. I mean, I, I, I think that there is more than enough talent, affordable talent, 
in, specifically to this trade, this, uh, this you know, part of the industry. Um, I think that um, you know, if you have a professional who knows how to how to speak to us um, and has that list of people to contact beyond just what Cedia provides, um, it, it's it's you know, it's an easier process. Um, and you know they, they don't have to be hired for a retainer year round. It could be um, a project type of opportunity for this PR professional, you know, just around the show time, just you know, in the months leading up, and maybe the month after as follow up. So um, a lot of these folks are people we've worked with before, especially for a company that may not have exhibited at CD before. Um, it's it's a chance for them to have that that relationship already built, and you know, give us a little bit of a a foot in the door with that company yeah. to, before the show, so I think it's pretty important. You know, it's it's funny. We, we, By the we way, keep saying. Rusty G had a good uh, a good suggestion in terms of attracting people. He said, "You can do uh, for for Wi-Fi hotspots. Just go get some 4G Wi-Fi hotspots, at like Verizon or AT and T right. or whatever. Have a few of those." Uh, that's pretty cheap, you know. And, it's pretty cheap uh, for sure. And if I you mean, told somebody, "Hey, you know, uh, stop by, we'll have free Wi-Fi. You can hop on. You have a few of those. Uh, that's that's a good little. That's a good tip." Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying. He was like, "If you don't, if you don't know how to talk to us, and, and that's the thing. That's why we're holding this conversation. Is that we are a different breed. <laughs> Media, generally speaking, is a different breed, and we can be offended very easily. We can be." Um, we, it, it, not us specifically, but you know, I can. I'm easily offended. Generally speaking, <laughs> there are a lot of media out there that can be offended. So you know, that's why that's why we're talking about this kind of stuff, and we're going to get into some more soon. Um, but also, there are also a lot of uh, award competitions and different um, contests that surround an event like Cedia. You think it makes a difference if people? Submit an, uh, a product for an award. I mean, does it make a difference to the journalists? I don't know. I, you know, if, if it's your own awards program, I guess you know you're you're more aware of them before the show because you're you're seeing what the submissions are and it draws your attention earlier. Um, and, you know, I think that there are so many awards, frankly, that when someone tells me, "Hey, this is my award nominee," you know finalists for this award, I kind of just don't pay attention. It doesn't matter to me. It, it's, Callie, it's, what about you? I, I'm with him, actually. I, what if I, you win the award? No, it, it doesn't actually... If they if have... You, wait, it, let me ask no, you guys this no, no, question. No, hold on, Hang let me on. answer your question. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm not sure you understand. What I want to know is, if you walk up to someone's booth and they've got an award sitting there on their desk that they just won this particular award at this event, does it do anything for you? Slightly. Really? For me, it does. Okay, it so I'm glad. I'm glad. It, I'm glad we have a difference of yeah. opinion. But I'll tell you this: if I'm walking down the row and I see four different things, and I see one of them has a little award ha sitting there, and and by the way, because these events don't last but you know two or three days, if you have an award from anywhere, I, I don't know if it's this. I mean, yeah. after a while, I right. might recognize yeah, yeah. it. But just if there's an award plaque sitting there, sure. I actually think. Well, at least they did something to catch someone's eye enough, and that some that might be just enough to bring me in. And you know why? I think it is actually a good idea, and because I not, I'm not saying it's a bad idea to enter these things just because I don't that doesn't do much for me. But why I do think it is a good idea is because you have more opportunities to send me an email about it. That's true, and you know what else? I'm very surprised that you're saying it doesn't matter because you have been called on. To judge yes. and or MC I know. awards events, where just the fact that they entered ten or twelve people get in front of you, which gives them an opportunity to then take you aside Correct. and have one-on-one -on -one time with and you. And in those circumstances where I am part of that event, mm -hmm. it, it does something for me. But if I walk by a booth. Okay. I, I'm, it piques my interest just a, a little bit, but I, I do think it offers. I'm, I know that I'm a little odd in that way, and Jeremy, I'm going to call you odd as well because I think most journalists <laughs> are like you. It does pique their interest a lot more. Well, and, and I think that there are two different approaches with the awards. I think that they're very important to enter because of the publicity you get, but it's not necessarily just to the press. It's 
to your dealers or potential dealers, your integrator, um, you know, partners that are in this channel. Um, I think that they that they like to sell products that have been recognized. You that's know, true. that's oh, yeah. that's something. So so it gives it a, a, a little more credibility right out of the gate if they're a winner. And for me, I go off into a booth and I see an award from my competition. You know, so it's a little <laughs> different feeling. You know, and uh, CDA's awards for this particular show typically have been toward the end of the uh, the event, so you don't see those at the booth yet. It could be a finalist, but I think some of that's being changed this year for the manufacturers, so they're going to get that mark that marketing opportunity at their booth through the whole show, which is great. Um, and I do well, give credibility to to the manufacturer. I mean, the uh, the awards given by the association versus me and my competitors. You know, true. all yeah. our opinions. True. Speaking of the booth, okay, yes. we've, we've been let's talking a lot it. about the booth. Let's let's get into the booth. Let's and talk. you guys in the chat room are asking about booth babes. We're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about Just booth babes. Just give us a second to yeah, get there. That we are. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the booth itself for a moment because that's, this is one of the biggest um, expenditures that a company can make. Yes. Uh, some of these booths will cost. cost a lot. Well, I've seen booths that cost a million dollars, literally. So. Uh, just the just the renting of the booth, or no. you mean the all the the well, the I mean actual... the whole the physical okay. infrastructure of the booth. I, I've absolutely seen million dollar booths, and then I've seen a table with flyers sitting on it. So, Jeremy, uh, how exactly do you choose what booth you're going to stop at? <laughs> yeah, like like I said before, you know, I I, I will duck and run away from a really, really sad looking booth. Yeah. Honestly, it's just, it's, it's like a Pavlovian response for me from years gone by of, you know, getting trapped at a booth from someone who I'm the first person they've talked to all afternoon and they don't want me to leave, you know, and yeah. <laughs> it just hurts my, it makes me feel sad and, and you don't want to leave because you feel bad for them, but I, I would rather avoid it. So, you know, if, if a booth is, not too crazy. I don't want a lot of noise there. You know, um, if if it looks like they they just really are engaged and know what they're talking about, um, it it's it's kind of a, an intangible thing. It's hard to describe what that feeling is. Um, again, it's pre pre work. You know, before the show for me, having a reason to go there. It's I'm I'm typically t going to a booth, not looking you know wandering the floor, wondering what, what I might see next. Um, there's there's maybe a few hours I set aside at the most that I can do that, but uh, you know, and it, it I would defer to you, you you two because I think you're you're you kind of go in with uh, a different perspective in that regard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're you're specifically going to um, scheduled times and booths, and sometimes you'll stop if you see something that catches your eye. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Us on the other hand, yeah. we actually go into a conference not scheduling anything. We do not schedule Almost. any appointments for the most Generally part. Speaking. There are a couple of exceptions. Um, but we'll go in and we'll start at one end of the expo floor and we will make our way up and down the aisles and we'll stop at only the booths that look interesting to us. And by the way, we tried doing it the other way in the past. I mean, we tried having scheduled appointments, but the problem is you never know exactly where... Um, someone's going to be, and so you've got to go from this part of the floor to way over there to back over here. It's not efficient, and because we're trying to do a lot of coverage, we need to be as efficient as possible. Yeah. So, Callie, uh, let's talk a little bit about, okay, since we really do start at one end of the floor, and we will at least walk by every right. single booth at an event, why do we stop? Why do we not stop? Well, one, um, the, the signage, if, if I see something um, in, hanging in your booth that clearly and quickly explains what it is and it sounds interesting, then I'll stop. Uh, if it's vague, I'm more apt to walk by than get caught in a conversation that I don't want to be in because... Be because it wasn't a, big, a good fit. We just couldn't yeah, tell. Yeah, it just wasn't a good fit, but we just don't know. Before we get, even get to the signage, let me just address something from a philosophical perspective. You know, we talked about how much money people are spending to attend these shows. You, you have to buy the space. You have to fly your people there. You're paying for hotels, meals, time and opportunity costs. 
uh, the cost of potentially the PR people that you're going right. to you know engage in advance. Um, there, there are you know tchotchkes. You've got all this cost to not spend. Let's say five thousand dollars. It probably doesn't even have to be that much, but a few thousand dollars at a minimum to get a nice table and a nice printed backdrop. Just don't go. Yeah. I'm, I mean, that's my opinion, and I think that not just, I, I think we all agree that if your booth doesn't meet a certain minimum level of acceptable, you know, whatever, peop, it, you're not going to get ROI out of this event. So it's kind of a, there's some minimum that you have to spend or just don't spend any at all. And I, you know, I believe that. on that note, um, and to your to you saying that you just won't stop at a booth that has nothing, it's just a table. There have been occasional times where I have found amazing products at a booth like that. But here's the thing. The ROI factor is something you definitely need to think about. And I think these days you're better off on Kickstarter than you know Probably. doing something like not spending enough money at the booth because it's so rare that any of us will stop at a booth. Well, here's like another that. here's another reason, uh, and it's a very rational reason for us to maybe not want to, and that is that um, if if I go to a little table that looks very let's call it underfunded, right, and they have the greatest product idea in the universe, they show me something really cool. I also have to worry, as a journalist, about exposing this product right. to an audience so big that the demand could exceed their capacity, yeah. or they may not be around, they may not be able to produce it, etc. Right. So you need to look like you are in this, you're not going anywhere, and you'll be around. Okay, so now, having said that, we can move on. Let's get back to the signage yeah. stuff. You know, you gave a very vague example of you need to kind of tell me what what you do so I want to be a little more okay. specific number one the name of your company needs to be boldly printed yes. on that backdrop in your booth I need to see who is this company and it needs to be clear that's the company name then if you've got you know a few specific products that you're trying to show off give me a product name and give me a 10 word maximum description of what that product is. And it shouldn't be the most amazing, incredible, life-changing device ever. That doesn't help. I, I don't know what that means. It should say, you know, a, a, a multimedia um, streaming device that organizes your movie collection. Oh, okay, now... If I'm interested in anything related to that, right. I'm going to stop. But you've got to give me that. We're and not you've even got to talk to people pitch. outside of your company to make sure that you're actually um, understandable. Yeah. Because people inside your company know what you do. So, you know, take that step away from yourself. Mr. Jiggs is saying the signage should answer the old who, what, yes. when, and where question. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. true. I will, Callie and I will, will be walking down and we will stop and we will look over here and we will look over there and we're actually trying to read the signs and evaluate, do I want to waste my time at this booth? And be re rest assured because somebody, a uh, uh, two maker says some, but some people say the opposite, you know, the, the, to draw you in, but we deal with a lot of wasted time, all of us, and our goal is to get great content, not not just take a chance. Yeah, you know? we, I mean, we don't have time for we risk. Don't have time. We we like all humans are going through a process of trying to eliminate risk. Yeah. So um, uh, okay, so creativity. Yeah. Let's talk about that. I mean, it should be absolutely creative. It should be different. It shouldn't look like everyone else's. Well, Jeremy, but what does that mean to when, you, Jeremy? When you do coverage, when you go to a booth and you do coverage, how much? Multimedia are you doing? Photo and video, are you doing much of that or is it mostly writing and gathering of stories? For, for me personally, it's mostly writing and gathering information. Uh, we, we've shot video in the past and we have a bit of that and that, a lot of that's uh, prearranged. So again, pretty, pretty dry sort of approach on our part, but uh, I know that that's, that's your, you know, your sweet spot for shooting video. And I, I know that our, our, 
the folks we talk to are getting more and more savvy about this sort of thing and uh, comfortable with being on camera. And you know, it's just a, it's a matter of finding the right person for that opportunity for sure. Because some are not. Some are a deer in the headlights, and it's re really uncomfortable for them. Yeah, there's a few things that that we've noticed too. We we've seen a lot of almost everyone who even uh, uh, primarily focuses in the written content is experimenting with multimedia. And then what we've seen is we've seen a lot of situations where folks enter an environment where they don't get reasonable results with the multimedia and then that turns them off. Now with us, we, we are professionals with the video and photo stuff and we have a crew that we bring with us who are trained professional videographers. We bring our own lights, we bring microphones that are you know, right for the environment, et cetera, but it's very complex. I would say your booth needs to make it easy for people to capture pictures and video that are great. Right. How do you do that? Vibrant colors that look good as backdrops, right. um, a, a nice clear product shot with a company name that we can stand in front of to do our our introductions and our stand-ups. Enough and product so that if somebody is already looking at that product, you have something to give to the journalist to be right. able to ha handle. Keep some spare extra in yes. the background that nobody touches except journalists who are there with with, with, video, with cameras. video cameras and photo cameras. So you can say, oh, here, I've got one that you can use as a prop while you do your thing. And... One of the best things you could possibly do that almost no one is doing, lighting. Mm -hmm. Have enough lighting in your booth that, the, that these videos and photos turn out Look really good. great. These, yeah. these are huge, huge things you can do. And, and somebody asked in the chat room about vibrant colors. You did, you did mention that, you know, have bright colors, but be tasteful. Please be tasteful, because yeah. I won't stop if you look like That's you've true. just gone crazy. Um, Let's talk about the people. Oh. Let's, yeah, yeah well, we can talk about booth well, babes. Well, because they wanted the chat room definitely wanted to talk about booth babes. Jeremy, booth babes, yes or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> Callie, yes or no? You know, I get this question a lot since I am a woman, and I don't actually have a problem with booth babes. I don't think that they actually do anything for your product. They actually take you down a notch in class, um, but. Uh, so is that if, a yes or a no, or are you just neutral? I'm neutral, really. I don't I care. say yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. The booth babes may get the people to your booth, which is fine, but you have to do the work of selling the product itself because as soon as they look at, they, they're going to stare the booth babes up and down. If you don't catch their attention with the product, they're going to walk right away and okay. have no clue what your product does. I want to go back to Jeremy for a minute. So uh, you said no, <laughs> but let, now let me, re, let me rephrase it. Instead of calling them booth babes, let me ask you this. How about attractive, professionally dressed ladies at the booth who are well-versed in the subject at hand. And I know that you only spend, you know, a few hours walking around, but if you were to encounter something like that, might that be the tipping point that brings you into a booth? Yeah, yeah, and, and to be fair, the, there are um, modeling, quote unquote, modeling agencies that you hire mm -hmm. uh, talent from, and, it's, and, and if you are specific about what you're looking for, they'll provide someone who actually can learn some information, some, some right. details about products and be, be very intelligent about it and get you to the right people um, if you're there, you know, and they're the point person, they're, they're the face of that, that, that booth. And I've seen that happen before and you, you wouldn't know that they're not a, an employee because they're just dedicated to that. It's very much the individual who you hire and it's not always easy to hire the right person. It's luck of the draw at times, but um, I, I've seen it happen. And, I think you know there are companies that have a bigger budget that hire spokes model types as well that are beyond just the one that says, "Can I scan your card? Can I scan your yeah. you know, your yeah. badge?" Yeah. Which which I think is the worst approach that you yeah. can have with someone walking along the show floor. I mean, and by the I, way, I Mr. say Jigs yes to spokes models. You yeah. know, I mean that's a, that's actually a good good spend of your money because they do actually provide some value. Mr. And Jiggs is pointing out, don't just be a sexist, you know, not just the ladies. I mean, the, yeah. you know, it's the same yeah, thing works you know with what? having good looking guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, well, okay, yeah, if they're dressed nicely. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've actually, I, I just had a conversation with a friend of mine that's been in the consumer electronics market for a long time, and she was uh, mistaken for a booth baby. <laughs> she's a very well trained, intelligent, uh, you know, member of the company, and finally had to bring over an engineer to speak to someone, uh, and she. Just to kind of rub it in, she used him as a translator and would answer the questions and speak through him to get the media or whoever it was that was not who was questioning her uh, oh, credentials wow. to listen to her. So was, let me let me give you guys a, a slightly different perspective. I used to be a CMO, right? And uh, I've run sales and marketing organizations for a long time, and I will tell you. Uh, without a doubt, from an ROI perspective, I would always employ um, attractive, specifically ladies. It does not hurt to have an attractive guy or two, uh, you know, for obvious reasons, but I would definitely employ attractive women to work at the booze because human nature, I mean, it just brings people into the booth. You right. cannot. You cannot argue with results, and that is why you're attending one of these things, so consider you know, it. You know, E3, a few years ago, actually banned booth babes entirely for their show, and they would charge people fines for <laughs> having people in that didn't fit their dress code. Um, that lasted a year, and booth babes were back the next year because it they actually work. works. They work. Okay, so we anyway. won't we won't beat on beat on that uh, too much. Two maker, just a, I don't know if we're going to get to it later. So I just want to answer two maker's question: How long will we actually spend at a booth? Uh, it it depends on the complexity of the booth itself or the product itself for me. Um, but you know, fifteen minutes is probably a good uh, a good time frame. I think. Yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy, how about you? That's about right for me. There there was a day when I used to spend. A half hour, but there's too much to see now. It's time's too tight. So yeah. Fifteen minutes max. For us, if you've got one product, I mean, fifteen minutes is is a good amount of time with us. If you've got maybe three that we're interested in, well, then maybe maybe thirty minutes. Uh, but right. you, you really have to have some compelling stuff. So if you get if you get fifteen minutes with a with a journalist in your booth, a be appreciative of it. Feel you know like. Tell them. I mean, I'm not telling you to personally be appreciative. I'm saying show appreciation. Make them feel good. Be like, hey, I really, you know what, Callie? I, I so appreciate you coming by and spending some time with us. And I wonder if it's okay after the show if I follow up with you so right. that we can continue the conversation. Yeah. Something like that makes, makes a huge difference. And we'll talk about the after the show stuff here in a little bit. Uh, but before we move on from Booth Babes... Okay, what if you have a really good-looking CEO? <laughs> like uh, you, you uh, no. Yeah, whatever. Like. <laughs> no. You know, uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things, and I don't, uh, we probably have some CEOs watching us right now trying to get some tips. Here's my, here's my general overview about CEOs and working booths and, you know, being in front of the media. There are, there are two kinds of CEOs, okay? Those who really suck at dealing with the press. Right. And those who don't know they really suck at dealing with the press. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm being I'm that's that's a little unfair. But, but I'd like it, to apologize yeah. to all my fellow <laughs> CEOs out there. But But here's the thing. I actually mean, that's not, not true. I don't want to apologize to all of you. I only want to Just apologize to one percent of you because <laughs> most of you need to leave this to other people in the organization. For we lots of reasons. We do not like dealing with CEOs because we've had experiences with them who it just doesn't they value match. their own time more than ours quite often okay i'm the ceo of this company you know so uh, you should be kind of waiting on me and right. and i'm not saying this is conscious sometimes it's just they're used to being the important people yep. and when a journalist comes into your booth you're not the important person we just talked about the timing issue they've got to get in and get out so unless you can be very succinct succinct and, and again, you always have an opportunity to follow up later. It's good to build a relationship. But if I were the CEO, what I would do is I would, I would introduce myself. I would make myself available for short interview answers. And I would say, let me introduce you to Bob who handles all of our marketing. And I'm going to be right here, but he's going to take care of it. If you can't trust Bob 
to, rec to, to represent your company at the booth. Then you shouldn't have hired him. He should be fired because he should be able to do your job better than you yeah. in that particular environment. That is his specialty. Okay, your so job is running the company. You're there to support things, to answer questions, to be brief, and to, to build a relationship and get those guys out of your booth with what they need yes. right then and there. And then you can hog them up after the event when they're not busy all you want later on. But Jeremy, people... what do you think? Oh, I, I agree. You know, uh, typically CEOs are, are type A personalities and their attention span is, is a lot less than ours is. And, you know, they'd rather be doing anything else but talk to us at any length. So um, while, while we're still trying to stay on these 15 minute uh, cycles of getting to booths and out, uh, typically, they're they're just not uh, sincerely engaged with with us, and it's a small company it may be different, but if it's a company of any size, that's definitely I think my experience as well. Yeah, and, and, and you know there are uh, some. I, I hold the employees or the marketing person or somebody responsible because most CEOs don't know that they're not good. So you, as a marketing person or somebody else who's who's handling this, needs to kind of push that CEO out it's of hard the way. to do it's, it's hard to do but it I've needs been to be a done. CEO it's hard it's hard it's hard to tell a CEO I've been you know reporting to a CEO yeah. and I've been a CEO it's hard to tell a CEO and it's hard for a CEO to listen and hear that so just show them this video instead and, <laughs> you know if you just happen to get shown this by your people uh, you know you, you, you could be either one of those categories <laughs> I don't know but um, yeah, d just let your let your folks do their job, and, and let's speak let's speak a little bit about people's jobs. What what does it take to effectively work a booth, specifically when it comes to dealing with journalists, Jeremy? Well, I think that uh, you know understanding what someone is there to see and and helping them to to find that very quickly, uh, especially at a larger booth. You know, it, it, sometimes you need a, a map to get through a booth. And, and, and if it's a successful exhibit, they've got a lot of people in there. So I think it's about time management, keeping, keeping the, the, the task focused and getting you to the right people. Um, you know, I, I'm more than willing to talk to uh, a very educated PR uh, representative at a booth, knows their client inside and out, and get the overview kind of uh, piece. And if I need to, to interview someone, uh, with a little bit more uh, technical chops, then then they can always line that up. But but uh, but you know, keeping it, keeping it focused is really the key for me. Uh, not not getting too too sidetracked with trying to cover every single thing in the booth. That's not ever what I want to do. Uh, way too much to cover in that case. And one thing is uh, another thing is to understand the importance of press versus everyone else you know, at your booth, because uh, you can have a bunch of different types of people. You have buyers, you can have just you know, normal consumers, um, and then you have press. And when you look at a press person, you're not looking at one single person. You're looking at 100 people. You're looking at 100,000 people. A million people. A million people, whatever their reach is. And you don't know that by looking at them, but you know that it signifies more than a single person. That's right. And just remember the old Star Trek you know, line that Spock delivered, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. <laughs> and then he died in the radiation chamber. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to say it, uh, but you know somebody's got to do it. Sometimes it's sometimes you have to be the bad guy. If you're standing there having a conversation with a nice individual at the booth, um, and you're talking about all kinds of things, and you see someone obviously that looks like the press coming in, maybe you you spot their press badge. You see two people. One is carrying a camera. One has a microphone. You honestly have to at least acknowledge those people and take action to get them to someone who will specifically take care mm -hmm. of them rapidly, even if it means interrupting what you're doing and potentially upsetting someone. And usually they're not going to be upset if you handle it right. If you yeah. say, hey, I'm sorry, we're expecting them. Can you give me just one second? I'll be right back to you. Then walk over, introduce yourself to whoever it is and say, Hey, it looks like you guys are here from the press. Can I can I introduce you to our very specific assigned person to deal with the press? And that person knows 
um, you know, all the products inside and out. They know the company line, et cetera, and they are prepared to interact with the, the, uh, the, exactly. the media. And uh, also, let's talk about examples. Um, uh, talking to that person to get for them to get the right coverage that they need. Uh, with, the, with the two of us, I'm going to group us together for this purpose, uh, we're going to be looking at it two different ways. Uh, your trade, so you're looking for very specific information. We are looking for more generic information. We're looking for a story to tell, right? So um, having different types of examples for each different type of press is very important for them to be educated on and know when to pull out what scenario. Well, Jeremy, you're, you, we're, we're more generic. So what kind, as a trade, as someone who covers trade stuff, trade industry specific stuff, what kind of, what kind of things are you looking for? Well, I, I think that uh, a lot of times if, if someone can tell me a specific ex example of an installation that they have with a specific uh, integrator dealer that that goes a long way it's like um, like how you guys are giving very specific examples telling anecdotes and anecdotes really stick with with uh, with us I think and it's human nature to mm -hmm. remember a story better yeah. than maybe some technical specs you know so if you can tell me an example of your product being installed in a in a, an environment and how it solved the problem um, that, that's going to resonate with me right away, and it may even give me an opportunity to tell that story to my readers. My, you know, uh, you know, maybe that that turns into an interview later with that dealer. Um, and even if it's a new product, a lot of times these products are out in beta test mode, and you've got dealers out there who are working with the products, and you can give me an example, um, very specific to to that product and what it's doing. So I, I, that, that to me is a key. Let me, let me talk about the language that they use with us and, and ask if this sounds like a fair generalization. Since you are a trade, uh, you cover trade a particular vertical, let's say, do you think it's fair for me to suggest that when uh, people in the booths are interfacing with you, they can be more... Uh, industry specific, they can use more jargon, they can use acronyms, um, they can assume knowledge on your part and then get really into specific nitty gritty stuff. Is that accurate? Yeah, to a point. You know, I'm, I'm still not in the field doing the work, so they may still manage to talk over my head even after, you know, years and years in this, in this uh, space. But they can definitely short, take shortcuts in the way they explain things to me. I don't need the 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 one the expl explanation you give to your mother-in-law. You know that that's that that's good for for certain certain folks, but I would rather kind of get to the point of you know the technical details. Uh, I do like those examples, like I said, but you you have to realize the difference between someone from you know residential systems, CE Pro, custom retailer that the, the the main trade publications versus the general consumer, uh, broader reach uh, publications, which need need a, maybe a little different approach. But a lot of those folks are very well educated, like yourselves as well. So uh, you just kind of have to to see see where you are at the beginning. Uh, ask questions. Say, you know, where do you want to take this? Um, how how deep do you want to go with this? I'm, Who's I'm your okay audience? With yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, I think from our perspective. Most of the time, if we were to just generalize, I would say when we walk in, the first thing we'd like to hear is, okay, tell me a little bit about who this product is targeted at mm -hmm. and a little bit about what problem it solves, you know, for them, okay? Right. So, uh, you know, this is an iPad case <laughs> and uh, unlike other iPad cases... I hear we, iPad case only. Yeah, we, 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 we've <laughs> seen them all, okay? <laughs> Unlike other iPad cases you've seen, this particular one hovers in the air in front of people, <laughs> and that's significant because, because you, you don't have to hold it. Your hands are free. It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> I mean, and then we can start asking. Then we can start. Don't assume that I've seen hovering iPad cases before, <laughs> um, and I just want to know how it works. Tell me that. Tell me why it exists, and then let me ask. Wow, how did you make that happen? I mean, what's, you know, how'd you get around Technical, the whole gravity yeah. thing, you know, et cetera? 
Yeah, so, for I mean, for, for generic, for, for people like us, we are looking for a story to tell our mothers. Yep. That's that's how we approach our stuff. So, you know, you, you definitely need to know who you're talking to and have different, uh, different examples for that. Uh, shall we talk about what people are wearing outside of the Booth Babes conversation? Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk <laughs> right. about that. Um, so I, uh, maybe you'll agree, maybe not, uh, but I think, you know, logo t-shirts or something more casual is more approachable uh, for somebody like us to, to come into the booth and talk to than a suit and tie and uh, looking way too professional. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, that everyone's gotten more comfortable with, with the logo uh, collared shirt kind of approach, and uh, especially in, in the Cedia channel, and uh, and it, it is less intimidating. And it's a lot more comfortable for the people that are standing at the booth all day. So, I would go with that approach. I don't think it's a it's an essential element to what we're talking about per se, but it I, I think that that it's kind of become the 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 de facto uniform, I believe, right. for for most of the booth. So, go with it. You know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I. Uh, if somebody's standing there and they're dressed, uh, you know, and they look uncomfortable and it just makes me think kind of w w maybe not even uh, right, you know, consciously, but it kind of makes me feel like, wow, that would be uncomfortable. And that would if I had to do that right. and kind of wear me out, which might make me a little more cranky, which right. might make really me talk to them? more irritable, <laughs> which might make me not so fun to talk to. <laughs> and honestly, so I think what you're wearing can affect how people view whether you're going to be a good, They're comfortable cool. person to talk to. to. And, and I know these things seem so small, but honestly... All of them together. It, and it's the marginal difference, mm -hmm. right? You do not have to be th the best at everything around. But you know what you have to do? You have to be this much more inviting than everybody else around you yeah. so that when we're walking by and we're like, okay, I really do want to stop somewhere, okay? That looks depressing. That looks sad. Those guys look angry <laughs> and they're, they're eating dinner, so I don't want to interrupt that. Oh, that one, hey, look, they look comfortable. They're smiling. The booth, look, I, look, I can see what it says. I'm going to stop there. And, you know, one of the things that you should do is you should allow enough flexibility in your approach before you get to the show uh, to take a look around the booths that have, have come up around you and adjust small little things once you're there. You know, you should have that flexibility built in. Yeah, I don't know exactly how you do that, but well, if you can, that'd be great. Well, in I mean, you, you, nothing major. It would be in certain small approaches or you know, how about, places that you put things. How about just do some thing. recon? Go to a couple of other events. If you're a marketing guy, go to a couple of other event, events. Take pictures of booths that you think, that really catches my attention. Then go back, sit with your team and say, uh, the, this particular thing about this booth I like, and this particular thing I like, yeah. and then build something kind of like that. And by so the way, the Rusty wants to know, uh, what about food, snacks that smell great? Popcorn always gets you in. The, the <laughs> only reason there should be any food in your booth is if you're giving it away. Yes. It, you, you're, people working in booths should never be eating. I swear to you, I don't care what your product is, how good it is, I will not come to talk to you if you're eating because I'm not rude. I just don't do that. Yeah, you don't Jeremy? want to interrupt. You don't want to shake somebody's hand, greasy hand. Yeah, and that, that's the opposite of a good smell too. Typically, I'm, yeah. it's my olfactory nightmare to walk in and smell someone's, you know, barbecue sandwich while I'm trying to work. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. How about if they have beer at their booth? Sometimes they allow people to do that, beer or or free food kind of things at their booth. What do you think about that? I, I'm, you know, if it's a certain time of day, I, I'm actually pretty happy to have a have a cold one, you know. You and, might stop by. Yeah, you yeah, mean yeah. like 10 a.m.? Hey, might that be yeah. one? <laughs> yeah, right. Might that be one of the reasons that people could, ad in advance, tell you like, hey, on the end of the day on Wednesday at 3 p.m., we're going to have a keg brought in. Stop by for a cold beer. Would that bring you in potentially? Well, I'll tell you, I, I went to my first uh, ISE show in Amsterdam this past January, and, uh, you know, it's very, very cold there that time of year, and really good quality coffee at a booth was great to me. Like, that, all day long, you know, to have a, a professional coffee maker, you know, this guy <laughs> Like a actually, barista kind of person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes the little, little shape, you know, uh, leaf, 
shape out of the foam and all of that. But uh, I've stopped that, that was a great little amenity. And, 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 and yeah, at the end of the day, if someone says we're going to just have a casual conversation, having some beer, you know, that, that sounds good after a long day. I, and it's usually someone I know, but it, uh, it, it, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> They're saying in the chat room, now, now every show is going to have like 100 different competing smells. Don't worry, not everyone's going to follow our advice. Well, um, and a lot of shows <laughs> won't let you do yeah, it. And, no. and also, you have to set aside additional space in your booth, you which do. means you got to pay for a bigger booth to accommodate something <laughs> like that. But again, you've got to think about everything in terms of ROI. I mean, if, if, uh, if you pay, let's say, $10,000 total to have a presence and you get you know 50 people stopping by versus you pay $20,000 and you get 500 people, well, you know, a thousand percent more people for double the cost yeah. is a better ROI, you know? So I don't know. It's So one of the things that um, bothers me to see in a booth uh, is people twiddling their thumbs, just standing there waiting for me to come in. I'm less likely to do so. Uh, it lo they look bored. Uh, so they should have something to do. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know what kinds of things that you, you would suggest, but, you know, one, just have a demo going or something like that. Any other ideas? Well, yeah, you know, some of them have set presentations that they do, and uh, they're, they're pretty regular presentations. So um, if it's a company that I, even if it's one I'm familiar with, there, there are times when I will have a 10 minutes and I can stop in and, and get, get a, you know, a, a kind of an overview, not directly directed toward me, but to to an audience, and it's a good way to kind of get a preview before I have my conversation. Um, and 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 it's it just looks like the booth has their act together. They're always doing something, and they've always got someone in there with an audience, that, you know. And uh, and 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 small demos, obviously, um, that's more common. And and I think that that having a plan and doing it on a regular basis is is going to be the key because I. I don't want to walk in and just see a big wall of products that's, you know, it just looks intimidating and dull and everything <laughs> else. I, w I want a little bit of action, you know. Sure. So. And smile at all times. Have those smiles going. Uh, your workers' faces should hurt by the end of the day. Sorry. That is true. Workers. Okay, let's talk about a few things that people really shouldn't do. And then after we do that, I think it's time for us to talk about what, what happens after the trade show. Okay. okay? So... Um, uh, Callie, any big, like, no-nos, things that you just, oh, God, do not do this? Oh, well, one is uh, when somebody chases me down the floor halfway, like, I'm at one booth, they're way over there, and they're chasing me down. Come, come talk to us. Come talk to us. As we already said, we actually go straight up and down the aisles, right? So that is really annoying, and it ruins my entire plan. What about, now, you're, you're actually a little bit different, but this does apply to some people like you. Uh -huh. um, some people actually recognize you. Right. They might come and hunt you down because they're like, that's Callie Lewis, and they want to come and talk to you. Callie, I know you're really busy, but could you please come and stop by our booth? What if it's obvious? I mean, if is there a difference between... If it's obvious, they know, between, it is. There if, is. They don't, if they have no idea who you are... If they just see a mic in my hand... They just seem desperate, right? They just seem desperate. If they know who I am and they actually say that then it is different, um, and I will, I will do everything in my power to accommodate that request. So. Yeah, nobody recognizes me, so I don't have to worry That's about that. That's not true. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, any things that people do that just absolutely should, they should not do at these kinds of events? Uh, criticize me is one, I guess. Oh, I could wow, what? really? What have they done? It happens. it happens every year. There's somebody that didn't get something covered and they have a feeling of you know that they it, there's no way that that shouldn't have been in you know it's 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 part of the the nature of the beast of doing a show daily it's very immediate right there and you know they want to have seen their product appear on the front page and day one of the thing and and so instead of just saying hey you might have missed this or something it's why didn't this get it you know and right. it, it's just the the tact that's taken and you know, it doesn't happen a lot, but it, it sours the day, it sours the yeah. moment. You don't really want to go out of your way um, going forward. So I think it's just, it's all about human res just respecting your fellow, you know, 
person at the show more than anything and yeah. uh, understanding that we're all working really hard and trying to trying to cover everything and it's not always going to work out perfectly for everyone. On the other side of that, so don't criticize but also don't kick you know, kiss up to us. Don't you don't know, kiss my ass. I'm not going to say that, but don't don't do that. A <laughs> hundred people just did that, right? I mean, everywhere you go, I mean, it's happening. So right. yeah, we don't need that. Just yeah. straight talk. And and so just I would say my one thing tagging on to what you guys are saying is, um, do not do not send the marketing guy to talk to me. Okay, send the press guy to talk to me, not the marketing guy. I'm not the general public. Words like revolutionary. We hear do, that 20 times a day. Yeah, everything that I've seen is revolutionary, so nothing is revolutionary, okay? <laughs> Unless you invented something that I've literally never seen before and probably didn't even know was possible or didn't know I needed, it's not revolutionary. It's really cool, it's really neat, but don't even use those kind of descriptor words with people in the press. Those are our words to use, not yours. I mean, if your product is that good, believe me, I will tell people that. I will say, this thing is amazing. I love this thing, and that's what you want. But don't tell me how much I'm going to love it. Don't tell me I'm going to be right. amazed by it. Just talk to me like a person. Like, yeah. you know, hey, I'm your buddy, and uh, let me show you this neat thing we did. We spent a lot of time working on it. One thing that I think you can do is remind people a little bit of the fact that there are real humans behind it. You know, you right. say, hey, that's our CEO over there. He spent three years developing this product. Wow, that makes that me think... That actually does a lot for us. Yeah, that makes me think, wow, that that took a lot of work. I, right. Let me... Why did it take so long, you know? and Or if you have stories like your people were, you know, in conference calls with people all around the world all night long for a period of a month just to get something yeah, working. for this one you know, little thing, you know. The, things like that, that, that makes yeah. it humanized for sure. Little stories. but Our, our time is, is a major thing that people have to be respectful of, as we've been saying all along, right? I mean, you, so yeah. you only like 15 minutes, right? Um, and... and one of the things that gets in the way is we will give you signals um, that we are not interested in something, or that we're, or that we're or needing that we, to move on, or needing to move on. Because thanks our for time, that information. I mean, that's really good stuff. I'll take a look at that later. Yeah. You know, let me get a brochure from you. That's a signal that we're moving on. We're done with you. Please don't continue to talk to us, right, Jeremy? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you have yeah. anything that you specifically say when it's ready for when you're ready to go? Is there like something that always comes up? Like, that you tend to say? I know uh, you don't want to share your secret, <laughs> but what the heck? Do it anyway. Um, well, it's been great talking to you and getting yes. caught up on all of this, yeah. you know? And, and you know, as soon as you start that, they should get the, the hint that yeah. it's about time to wrap it. But <laughs> you'd be amazed how many times that doesn't work. Yeah, right. watch for yeah, those it signals, really, people. It really doesn't work a lot of times. Okay, and so when we're ready to wrap up, that does not mean it's over. And I think this is right. one of the, I think people feel like when we're going to leave the booth, it's like we're breaking up, you know? I'll never <laughs> see you again. I'm so, oh, my God. No, that's just the beginning of the relationship. In fact, I would argue that the most important part of the entire relationship has just begun yes. when we leave. Mm -hmm. Because what you need to recognize is that every single booth we visit, well, when they finally decide to treat us like, you know, <laughs> press and treat us nice, assuming they're treating us like that, they're all treating us like we're their long lost brother, okay, while we're there. The question is, how soon afterwards do they forget about us mm -hmm. and is it all over? Right. So I think that the most valuable part of attending these kinds of events, uh, outside of probably making relationships with buyers directly who convert into cash, is making and building relationships with media who can bring your messaging to literally millions of eyeballs which then convert into cash. It's indirect right. cash, okay? So, and realize uh, that 98% of companies out there, for us at least, do not follow up with us. So if you do, yeah. you're, you're yeah. up there. Jeremy, quick question. How, 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 after trade events, how many people who have promised you they're going to follow up actually follow up? Just as a general percentage, would you say? Oh, I, I don't think it's it's the the ninety eight percent that didn't 
you know, follow up. But I, I do think that half of them probably at least don't okay. don't follow through. Um, they, they're they're just they don't they're they're back there trying to create the products or you know get the products to market, and they if they don't have that staff, the ones that have professional staff are better at it. The ones that have PR agencies are even better because that's what they're hired to do. You know, right. I think that's the key. If it's a project hiring, you know, hire them through the show till after the show, at least the month following. You know, so you can get your post show uh, coverage. The interesting thing is for us, I think it doesn't matter what size they are; they're all equally bad at following up. So right off the bat, if they do follow up, they have a huge advantage yeah. over anybody else. I mean, even. PR people do not follow up a lot of times, which right. just because they're overwhelmed with business cards, which you should literally always exchange, shocks right? Me. But here's the thing: so, Tim Mayer was asking, how should you approach a follow up? The first step is to actually ask that journalist right then and there, and be organized in your approach, how they prefer to be contacted, whether it's email or phone or whatever. Um, get that information and. To be honest, maybe PR firms actually have certain ways of doing this. If you don't have a PR firm or a marketing person, you should, or you know, an outside person, you you should have like a logbook of some sorts, keeping notes. I don't care if the journalist sees you doing so; it'll actually tell me you care. It's better if they see you doing it yeah. because then they might then they'll think, wow, okay, this person's actually making a note to contact me. Right. Maybe they will. And then when you do, they'll be like, oh, wow, I'm glad, I, I, remember. Yeah. I remember, you know. And so, yeah, send them an email or whatever their preferred method of contact is and say, hey, we met at so -and -so this show. particular show. And, and when you're making your notes, make a note of anything that you might have talked about that was a little bit unique or, you know, the product that you went over. So you can say, hey, Callie, do you remember you stopped by our booth and I showed you the blah, blah, blah. And you asked for a review unit of it. Right. Uh, here, you know, we wanted to get your address to do so, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, it really, it hinges on your conversation that was at the show. Um, don't subscribe me to uh, newsletters just because I gave well, that, you my business card. Yeah. Oh, I will hate you for it. <laughs> Speaking of business cards, uh, Jeremy, do you carry business cards with you to these events? A ton of them, yeah. Yep. That's a key ingredient. And if I don't get a return business card, that's a, you know a bad deal. I, I I know guys run out of them at, at booths, but uh, but it's just as easy to forget who I talk to at a booth for me as it is for them. If you don't get the business card, you know I'm I'm trying to write down notes as well, but but, but the cards kind of are the quick reminder for everything you've done. Yeah. Make sure, I mean, make sure you don't run out of business cards. I, I plan for getting completely swamped. All right, I, I don't want to do this because we're, we're over know, our time. We and over and our we time. want to be respectful of everyone's time who's participating as well. Uh, but I have one last little kind of uh, tip that I would throw out there. Okay. And, and you guys, now is the time. If, you, if we haven't covered things that you're really interested in, please... Let us know. Uh, ask questions. I see a couple of them here. Uh, we'll get to those here in okay. a second. Uh, but uh, one last little thing that I would say is we, we've talked about a lot of little differentiators. And that's really what it's all about is standing out from the crowd. And it's true in general marketing. It's also true when it comes to event marketing like we're talking about now. Um, and, and the significance of the press, it's really hard to, to um, understate because it really, as Callie mentioned earlier, when one of these people walks in, it's, it's the equivalent of 20,000 eyeballs or 100 or more. It's, it's, it's a lot. So the question is, not only how can your company stand out with your booth to the general people that are coming in, but specifically as you're making relationships and building them with these journalists, what can you do? And so a couple of things that just pop into mind. Number one, try and be aware of the journalists who are going to be in attendance. I mean, you're, all, you're given the list of registered journalists. Why would you not go and look up their Twitter profiles and you know things like that? Heck, if I were you, I would have taken an intern and I would have them sit down for a few days and Put a bio and a picture and Twitter ID and a, you know whatever Google Plus Facebook links, 
and I would create a document that I would circulate to all the people in We're advance of that this. show, and I would say, study that. And, tr you know, try and recognize some of these people. Go visit their websites, watch them, and then when they come up, you can actually legitimately say to them, oh my God, Jeremy, I've been reading your stuff. It's good stuff. I really love it. I'm so glad you stopped by. That would make such a huge difference. And yeah. then, to take it one step further, if you could try and have a little special giveaway, yeah. something that you only, only give to journalists, and it's just to try and make them remember you among the 200 different people that they met, so that when you do the follow-up contacts, I think it makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, so I actually want to expand a little bit on giveaways. Uh, there was a show we were at. I don't remember which show it was, but um, I went by. You guys know how much I love robots, right? I know what show it was. What? It was I the Apple. Oh, it was Macworld. Macworld. Okay, it was Macworld. So we were going by. This company had this presentation being set up for specific people. And there were these little robot USB hubs. Um, it was a USB hub shaped like a shaped robot. Shaped like a robot. And I walked by. I was like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Can I have one? I specifically asked, can I have one? And this company was not a company that we would cover naturally. Yeah. Um, because but they were giveaways. To, but they were giveaways. And the woman specifically said, um, no, those are for this presentation that we're, that we're doing. And I pouted, pouted, and I gave her a frowny face, and I was joking around with her. And before I left, she actually did give it to me. So what did I do? I tweeted it. I took a picture of it. It had their company logo on it. And I looked up the Twitter account, and I tweeted a, a picture about it. I was like, look what I got from Macworld, you know, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. And I, I used their Twitter ID. A year later, at a different conference, uh, the, the CEO of that company came up to me and said, thank you so much for tweeting about our robot USB hub. <laughs> you know, he specifically... It was like the biggest like, coverage that yeah. they got and blah, blah, blah. And it was, it was yeah, a lot of return, right? Yeah, it was a huge return for them. And, you know, that's, that's just something to be said. You know, they weren't going to give it to me. Yeah. And they did. It and was like a $3 tchotchke, okay? But again... Don't be... You were standing there with a microphone right. in your hand, a mic flag on it. I'm standing beside you with a big camera... Mm -hmm. And they had to really have an internal debate about whether they wanted to do that. That, that shouldn't be the case. There should that be no debate. When you like... see microphones and cameras and press badges, it's not like an individual. Every, every individual wants a tchotchke. Believe me, we don't want them. No. I, I can't I carry Jeremy. I only want something that I really I mean, want. <laughs> you can't even carry them home, can you? No. Nah, if you nah. ask for one, it's a huge deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And to this day, that robot USB hub is actually sitting on my desk. It's I look literally. at it every day. You know, so it's um, do not be cheap with journalists, Chris Philby says, and that's definitely something. If, if I don't want you to know I'm a journalist, I will hide my mic behind my back. I will keep it low and out of sight. Otherwise, I, I'm, I'm looking for you to pay attention to me because there will be some return. You know what I mean? And we don't have time, so let's let's yeah. get to it. Let's do the show and move on. So one question from the chat, unless oh, you were go ahead, go ahead. Was QR codes on business cards? Oh yeah. Don't do anything for me. What about you, Jeremy? No, it, uh, I, I haven't gotten up to speed on QR codes yet. That's uh, <laughs> the the uh, mystery item. I think that uh, if you know, I bought fireworks the other day at a, after Fourth of July sale, and it showed me how the fireworks looked. I was like, oh, that's what QR codes can do. <laughs> but I, have, I haven't actually uh, had an experience at a trade show yet that, that was effective. I don't, maybe there's something new this year that will catch my eye. Yep. Okay, any other big things that you know we really just need to let people know before we wrap it up? I don't, you covered it so well just uh, in your wrap-up. I, I would say that do your homework. You know, get, get a list of who your meetings are with in terms of the media and know about their, their publications or their out, media outlets and, and connect with them because, you know, to be considered, to, to be treated as a stranger when you walk in is, is kind of the worst feeling. And if someone can, I, you know, don't, don't kiss my ass, but flattery does help a little bit, you know. I kind of like to be acknowledged and, 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 uh, and, and 
somewhat known when I walk in so that, uh, so that we're not starting from, from scratch. Yeah. That would be about it. And be All genuine. Right. I think that's a, yeah, a major Yeah, genuine major is, is great. True. And it's easier to be genuine when, when you, you know actually people. know the people and when you respect the people who are already coming to visit right. you. Right. Okay, so speaking of getting to know the people, um, Jeremy, you, they can find you over on twitter.com forward slash resist, R-E-S-I-S-I-S-Y-S, resist, like residential systems. Right. And on Facebook, you're also the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, email, do you want to hand an email out to them in case they need to get a hold of you? That's absolutely fine. Cedia has it, and so <laughs> have it here too. Okay. J. Glowacki at NB Media, like N as in Nancy, B as in Boy Media dot com. Yep. Correct. And uh, Callie, you can be found over at twitter.com forward slash Callie Lewis. Facebook.com forward slash Callie Lewis. Callie Lewis Google, on Plus Google Plus is G plus dot T O forward slash Callie Lewis. Right. And uh, John can be found over on Twitter at John Pose, P O Z. Indeed. Uh, as same thing for Google Plus, G plus dot T O slash John Pose. Facebook slash John Pose. He's the same everywhere. <laughs> it's funny how we all do that, right? We kind of keep it consistent. You kind of have to. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining us. I hope that it helps, especially yes. as you're uh, entering the trade show season here. And if you have any follow-up questions for us, we're all, as you can tell, yes. very, we, we're, we're not paid to do this. <laughs> no. We, we just, uh, we've had a lot of experience at these kind of events, and we wanted to share some of that insight, so we hope that it was valuable. Let us know. Tweet us, and let Absolutely. us know if it helped at all, and let us know if you have ongoing questions, and we're happy to share even more. Thank you guys so much for your time. We appreciate it, and we will see you guys later. Say bye, Thank Jeremy. You. Bye, bye guys. later.